Remaining. And Pizer can run it. Asta has no real kind of gauge. Five to seconds him. remaining. Magnus sprinting at them, Abaddon, so pretty scary, and it also limits what I think when they can pick carry position. You may now select your heroes. So, okay. So, really hard to run into basically delivery system. What if you're delivering into a hero that just wants to man point? I mean, that's that's what Zeus wants. I actually really like this uh, Astro Draft. But then again, we like the previous draft we as well. And uh, that went uh, horribly. Yeah, I think the key thing here is T1. All of game. This Medusa, it's very strong from Astro. Eventually, let's have the issue. Going into high ground. The way in which T1 was able to put down the map. You can ease an over of like think it's a viper off and into the producer isn't gonna have not alone with an empowered lifestealer accelerates his game. Lifestealer's biggest weakness. Early ice bad at farming. Magnus will help her. T1 it's all about 320 minutes, close out the map quickly. Try and beat the Medusa before she gets man to butterfly. Run. That's gonna be when will then become a bit more clowny and you're hoping for like Magnus to skewer her away from the fight, tie her out, kill everyone. That's when it's gonna be high skill, but now if you want it's well. Strong farm, early pace, run at you quick. Enchantress 4 seems the most impossible hero to lane. I think Viper alone is beatable with Musa, but I think Enchantress plus Viper a pain. I think they're gonna run to one lane with all the pulling blades. Like tree, like in all your pubs, like mm, yep, the tree yep. end. No, no, you, you don't do that. The, the trees respawn. They three minutes. They respawn. Yeah, but they respawn. It, it can't do that anymore. But the mean sending a message. Is that it? Ti Jenkins. Yep, that's fair. Back. Back to you. All right, well, there you go. Quick, there we go into the game, and we will see just how many minutes we get. This is TI on the line for T1. Let's see how they do. This is bullshit. Here we are again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, T Master against uh, T1. I'd say much better draft uh, for T Master in this one. A lot of team fight uh, abilities, a lot of ways to disengage the fight. Here I am again with my boy OD Pillow, and we're ready to hop in. Yeah, what other cost? Looking for this, looking forward to this one. And looking forward to at least seeing, yeah, if we can get a bit a bit more Dota really just out of Asta. They didn't really get the chance to play at all last game as T1 completely ran them over. Uh, uh, but you, as you say, definitely reason to believe that Asta will stand a, a chance of at least making this one a, a little bit closer. Uh, that last pick, Medusa, definitely looking like a, a strong character to rally around, uh, despite the fact that so many carries were taken out of all Mono is still... He's not going to be too disappointed with, yes. with what he's ended up on. Uh, the, the thing is, how how is such things as a laning going to be? Do, do you like that they've done this from T1 Viper to the off lane and then Carl on the Magnus in the mid? <laughs> I like the Viper plus the Enchantress. I, I think this lane, like what I want to see from Aster is blocking the big camp. If necessary, go body block it because Enchantress got to so much from the previous game. Uh, got the two, three big creeps and then they just snowballed from there. Uh, Life Stealer this time around he has empower something that he struggles with that panel talked about uh, is like getting to his uh, second item uh getting that what, what he has queued up just a bracer and the face boots <laughs> ogre axe we've seen more and more echo sabers being uh, picked up it might be a casual sand uh we'll see what he decides to go for i love armlet here uh, they have one instant disable and that's uh, lion i mean two if you count in uh, hex and impale at the same time uh, I want to see earlier Satanic to be able to deal with the tree and protectors overgrowth. It's a, another way of dispelling things. Uh, great against the dispelling the silence, which he struggles against. Uh, but the farm lane, it's gonna be nasty. Yeah. Okay, so uh, they, just, they decide to swap things around. They, never mind. They uh, did, yeah, so but they support. So do you like this? Why have they done this this game, do you think? I think they want to have a stronger support for Life Stealer because if you have Abba Life Stealer, that doesn't sound uh, too strong, and they will wanna, also want to put uh, a bit. Uh, uh, like, I think it's just more about uh, securing that uh, Life Stealer's farm. 
we'll see if they're able to do that. Of course, last game we did see both carries have a bit of a tough start, tough laning phase. If uh, 23 Savage and Monet and have a bit more of an enjoyable time in the early game this time round. Uh, looking at the mid matchup, you have White Album on his DP against the, the Car Magnus. You know, you're a melee hero, you're gonna get siphoned. I guess you've always got the skewer to get out. Uh, how do you expect to see this one going? Can, can someone get ahead of this matchup? Mag so far doing a very good job in terms of uh, CSing now puts a point and Empower as you mentioned like that uh, level 2 spirit siphon when it comes uh, online the extra charge uh, will start to put uh, some more pressure on a mag but we've seen so many times uh, in this patch with the addition of the water runes where like even weak laners like tiny Seems uh, very viable. Like have that constant HP and mana regeneration. Skewer back to the tower on the mid lane. Good body blocks. Yeah, some good damage here done by Carl. They'll have another shockwave in a few seconds, but not enough. Because one of the one of the strengths though, as we're seeing defensively, why album is if he does get caught in that sort of position. Unlike pretty much any other hero, the, the, having the siphons will allow him to offset enough damage to, to keep him alive. Life stealer. Half HP. White Mon will use the healing cell to bring him back the full. So far, decent CS. Uh, XXS doing a very good job uh, this game. 16 CS uh, about to hit level 3. Also has the Ring of Health going into Vanguard, which is something that I've not seen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, why, why do you think he's leaning the way of Vanguard this game? What, what's he seeing that's making him want to do that? Maybe just a laning stage against the Life Stealer. Magnus also relies on dealing uh, heavy right click damage. Uh, might s still swap things around. Uh, I've seen a lot of Mars picking up a ring of health and then just keeping it. Sure. Yeah. You, know, the necessary upgrade. you can also disassemble the Vanguard because it has too much magical damage. You have Shockwave, you have Viper. Uh, rest is uh, pure damage and the right click, so I, I don't think Hood this game is any good. Where are you going? She top, or axe. It's gonna get taken out here. 23 Savage with the rage, he can stay on target. You can't get him off him. That's first blood this game, going to the carry of T1. Nicely done, this is a huge lead for the top lane. Now sitting at the 22 CS and one extra kill. Going into face boots. Like once he gets that, uh, it's gonna be pretty hard to run away from him. And he should feel safe on the top lane. I don't think they can burst him down from 100 to a 0. Mars 111 build needs to put more points uh, in his aggressive spells. I'm sure if they want to have any chance of pressuring T1 up here and just sort of the, the difference from, from both carries, it, it's building up now. And Mona, he is having a, a rougher time down bottom. Just a 15 CS T1. Again, you know, early days, but definitely a you know, similar size fortified. to what we saw last game of T1 just getting a, a better grasp but the game straight out of the laning stage. T1's Wrath heavily focusing on the laning stage, Viper lane dominator, uh, you have Lifestore against the Mars matchup, you have the Enchantress. Uh, some stacks are being made in the Radiant Triangle, there is one big camp being stacked. I want to see some more, especially if there's not much to do at the top lane. So Borax uh, already going there, trying to stack the big camp. Might be late, because he doesn't have boots of speed, just the Windblaze at the moment. No, she's done with the no, stun. He's stunned. he's stunned it from the fog yeah. and will be able to stack it. Yeah. You need to be careful. Playing into mag, playing into certain heroes like a Lash Rack as well allows them to invade your triangle and possibly get all the gold from it. XXS. Gonna run him down. Bonk, bonk. He's got the back of Borax and just in time. Is it enough? XXS, he'll live this time. He's out of there. Very close. Then a good job Borax was able to make it over when he did. And Borax. Yeah, folks upon a well here by, by White Mon. I mean, again, this Enchantress we saw last game, definitely being a huge nuisance with it now. You know, White Mon uh, on this top lane here by the carry, definitely putting in the work to make sure that 23 Savage has quite a, a lovely lane to start this game in. And it's only going to get easier for him because once the Empower comes online, it's going to be very hard to bring him down. They will need to use like exorcism, run him down, possibly a hex, even a finger. Uh, right now, he's still thinking about his items. Uh, he was uh, 
having uh, like Scotty queued up, casual Sanj. I think Armlet is the best choice. It's the cheap damage. You build it so easily early on, and then if they don't have enough burst, you can always toggle it. On the bottom, Viper. Goes for a more of a right click oriented build. Uh, decides to buy Band of Elven skin, so we might see either a Power Treads or a Dragon Lance. Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. Dragon Lance always feels good. Buffs that it's received always is that nice stat item if he wants to go the way. That sort Radiant's of build is mid lane. Oh, just heading over to take the small camp. White one as well. Also starting to, to farm this. Or try try yeah, to farm some of this stack. This is what I talked about. Empower is maxed out. Now they're going to try to steal the stacks, but Aster is ready to defend it. He's in trouble. Oh, Carl. Ghost come out, but Carl using the RP to, to lock back White Album. So both. It's both fine. Their ult's going down. Because he used the exorcism, but someone needs to be on a mid lane and defend this tower. Glyph pop. Carl will pick up a bounty rune, so that will refill his bottle two thirds off. White one. He's trying to come over to maybe start to be a part of the defense, but of course walks straight into a line. Warax waiting on the high ground. Him and White Album having the burst to take him out. Disaster, though. He might have done that on purpose just to mitigate the damage done to the tier one tower from the exorcism like he bought time and that one that doesn't really matter that much on the top lane 23 savage keeps on farming so i believe it's all good yeah i mean and, and, and who could they really move up to this top lane to, to slow down this lifestealer it, it's kind of heartbreak because it, it, it's a solid lifestealer game overall it is, looks good until Medusa gets a couple of items because they don't have too many gap closers. It, he is pretty much the only one. So Medusa will have a good time once she gets uh, to her second, third item straight into SNY. After finishing off uh, what seems to be the Dragon Lens, not even full Dragon Lens, needs Ogre Axe. I'm still just planning to catch up and after a tough planning stage for, for Monet. Starting to get pretty close to the top back last game as the TV, but it, it takes him a lot of time here. I remember the interview that we had with 20, 23 Savage during the second season. He talked about the Dragon Lance, how it's a great item, you can disassemble it, and he always wants to build it on Medusa. Zephyr. Well dropped. He just, he just sort of walked in and started punching the Medusa. It was a very uh, ambitious effort there. Uh, of course, Mone, he's, he's got back up around him. So Zephyr just ending up from handing a, a bit of gold and glory here to, to Monet. And he's, he's going to be very happy with uh, the baton turning up in that fashion. Abba position 4 doesn't provide you with anything compared to 5. Like, unless you snowball heavily, unless you get some return kills. You, in this game, you might have two position 5s. Or if you want to shift things around, I think it's much better that uh, Zephyr becomes 5 and Enchantress gets the items, because we saw in the previous game what happens if Eng gets the farm. Unfortunately, they cannot swap the heroes. Nine minutes in, just type minus swap hero. Maybe it's possible, Owen. Maybe it's possible. Oh, we it's saw the, no one's ever tried it, the game. There is the possibility. Until they attempt it, they are going to be stuck, as you say, as they are. It's a, a little bit of a slow start in that sense from the supports, but still the, the course, you know, just the fact that T1, 2K lead, 10 minutes in, just able to get that much more from the, the setup that they've had and it's ramping up you know there's no signs of sort of this this lead that t1 have slowing down which is it's definitely got to be a bit of an issue for asters Aster, they lost control of game one pretty early on and they did they really did. struggle to, to get anywhere close to, to bringing it anywhere near Never. back into to their ballpark a difference in this game is they have Ava plus Enchantress, so you can't really make aggressive moves. You can park inside, like in front of the tower, but you don't have that much tower damage early on. So Magnus decides to go for a Blink Dagger first item, which I really like, so that's gonna give them one way to start a fight, either a Blink RP or casual Blink Skewer, Life Stealer. Something that I noticed about 23 Savage when he's uh, playing Life Stealer is that will not be using Infest as a bomb. Most of the time just wants to be able to save the allied heroes, so something to look out for. Very good at it. I'm gonna maybe try and start some action here. Like, as soon as he shows his face, he knows that Aster. They've got a lot up on this top lane. The, the four of them ready to try and push down a tier one. Obviously, Exorcism 
up and ready to go from White Album if he wants to commit. There's if too much, put much AOE. Of defending this. I don't think they can defend. Tyrion Protector level 6, Mars level 7. We have the Exorcism up and running. Lion still level 5, but here comes Viper. And then they've got the Magnus coming over with the Blink ready. Arena's gonna get locked down. They look to focus. Google, we've got to die. Keep eyes on Carl. Carl can find the jump here with the ult. Empire on Savage. He's gonna jump over to the side, looking towards White Album. Will drop the RP onto the Death Prophet to allow them to burst through the DP. Can slam him as well. He's into the trees, Carl. Trying to clean the map, but Lanham, he'll make it away. So T1, they do actually manage to pull together the defense here. And the T1 tower, not taking too much damage at all, not even half of its HP there. So uh, another use of the exorcism, which doesn't result in, in an objective being taken by Aster. Radiance middle tower. Nice done, they did a much better job than I expected. Viper tipping it into the trees, sacrificing himself for the greater cause. They got the two return kills, and as you mentioned, like two exorcisms already used. What's off? XXS. Uh, he may have stuck around a little too long. Zephyr's gonna try and help him out. But with the siphon up on her, on Carl, there's, there's no chance for a jump out. Sticking around a, a little too long aggressive. and Aston not letting that go go away there. Immediate response with the overgrowth opening. So Viper going for a more of a right-click oriented build. As we discussed, Ogre Axe died on a carrier going into Dragonlance. Wants to have that... Uh, extra range i want to see what his next item is going to be maybe if he wants to get something more like he can get possibly a bkb and just the right click people down panel discussed about the scotty possibly on viper radiance bottom tower but is under Leisler has one queued up so we'll see they need to talk about the items it's very important unlike we did yesterday i'm playing magnus you're playing phantom assassin you still go for that battle fury I, I, I can't remember who it was, but there was a pro player who buys Battle Fury even though he has a mag. So that's that's you know, that's my uh, reasoning there. <laughs> you got to have as much cleave as possible. I would that's agree way to play. if <laughs> we were playing against the PL, but never mind. Monet clearing up the ancient stack. Same goes for Mag, who is uh, working towards his Echo Saber, wants to be able to scale. They slowed down a game a bit. So in both of these games, we have yeah, yeah. too much action happening early on. No, no, definitely more of a, a chill sort of opening. And as you say, at least for Asta for this time round, even though they're behind on the gold at the moment, the, the fact that they do have the Medusa to fall back on and, and with some really good solid team fight and sustain around him, definitely leads them to, to have a much stronger chance here as compared to the sort of the draft they had around Monet's Terror Blading game. Much better high ground defense. Uh, you have Strain yeah. Protector to just stall the game. Lanham Dyer's at the wrong uh, space, wrong time. So he is getting caught. This is the Lanham Classic, Strain Protector, something that um, he first shown in the DPC, going for the Holy Locket, uh, Living Armor, amplifying the heal, amplifying the healing on the towers as well. So pretty hard to take down, very annoying to play into. They don't have that much tower damage, so you can't really go in, deal chip damage. Uh, one of the reasons why I love Leshak in this patch as well, because you have this strength protector who's super popular, and then you go in, take the tower easily. Medusa, after finishing SNY, which is coming to her shortly, going into Aghanim's Scepter. Aghanim's got nerfed, still very potent item. For sure, one of the definitely more irritating carry Aghanim's to try and push and fight into when you're just constantly getting held in position by the bounce of the snake, the stone. Disaster, uh, swinging around bottom, see if they can catch it. It's just Zephyr around. He's a bit of a tough one, of course. We'll have to borrow time. They, they can actually fight long enough through. Okay, they've got the Yules. Uh, with the Yules, they'll be able to wait out a good duration of the borrowed time. Finger. Finger. It's way through. <laughs> I mean, gotta get those stacks, you know? <laughs> gotta get him somewhere, indeed. That's the first stack. Because if you have zero, you're kind of in a bad spot. 15 minutes in. Finger was definitely not necessary, but the Borax. Did he get the last hit? He did. So that's some extra gold for him. Working towards the Blink Dagger. Yeah, the, the blink is going to be pretty huge this game against the heroes like the, the life stealer with the rage. Still, though, you know, even if he does get that jump on Savage, Savage is going to be tanky. Sand's already done, nearly having it fully complete into the SMY. It's not going to be an easy life stealer to kill, Don't even if they do get that jump. And talking about jump, T1, they smoked up, Carl's ready to go with a blink RP. See what we can find. It's going to get over towards ladder. Cover the quick skewer back onto the trium. 
themselves an easy kill here. We'll give the information for the rest of the best. I want to see who gets the first Roche. Maybe they want to invade the triangle, try to get a kill there. Dead Prophet, very close to level 12. So Exorcism go from 8 to 16, which could potentially end up resulting in like taking a one fight the, in their own triangle and then going inside the pit. They have enough sustain. Mars in the end decided to go for the Vanguard and now going into Blink Dagger. So very hard to kill. Well, this is sample it at one point because uh, there's really no need to have it at the later stages of the game. It's more of a, yeah, I don't want to get killed in the lane. Borax getting caught. That's a solo RP on him. Oh, I'm back the cost. I don't know what happened there. Hello. Hopefully you can hear me again. Hello. What no, I was just failing. I, sometimes I have nothing. I have long monologues as well. Uh, Blyan got a kill. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now we're getting denied. They get the extra gold from it. I still this lead. Are you gone again? You're bit. not. No, I'm here. I'm here. I'm just sort of contemplating. You're... Mono is trying his best to, to farm up, but the, the, this lead is just growing. It's just you know, something about the way that T1 utilized the map. There's 23 Savage uh, and Carl, this top net worth. I mean, once Carl has the BKB, it's, it's going to be very hard to, to handle him. He'll just be charging in. Very likely to always find the RP target. Where are you going? It's very hard to take down against the strength talent on level 15. Echo Saber done, going into BKB. If he feels it's necessary, can disassemble the Echo Saber and get a BKB earlier. And then get that uh, possibly like upgraded again to Echo Saber or get an Orchid from it. A lot of players got better at disassembling items and just maximizing uh, what you can get. Right, so they have it. They're ready to go. The Overgrove's gonna come out. Range is already there. 23 Savage is gonna head over towards Lannan first. Mane, up with the Stone Gaze, trying to turn around. Even with the Stun Control of Boric, he just don't have enough damage. T1 is still at full HP. And Mane, yeah, he's, he's got to run. They're gonna look to probably die. This Rage is back up in a second. The 23 Savage, he wants to chase in. He'll turn for the easier kill of Borax. So they catch the line out to the side. But I mean, Asta, they try and give it a bit of a, a, a go there when it comes to the team fight, but. I mean, yeah, T1 barely taking any damage at all there from Astra's attempt to fight back. Yeah, this lifestyle is sitting at almost uh, 3,000 HP going in with the uh, cleave, a B3 BKB on the hero. Pretty much uh, impossible to take down. And now going into Scotty, just to reduce the healing. Yeah. Coming out from the tree and protector and that profit on top of it. It looks good. Looks very good for T1 again in the second game. Next big timing is gonna be that Scotty plus a double BKB on Radiant's Viper plus this Magnus. They're setting things up for a Roche. Potentially they have RP, did not use it in the previous fight. And again, it's, it's one of those situations where Asta, they're just not gonna have the chance to get over here in time. And even if they did, I don't know if they wanna try and take a fight. Especially after the outcome of that last one. Money just, he needs more time. He needs to at least have this Aghanims, it feels like, to to be able to, to try and fight. The, the stone gaze alone is just not enough uh, in, in these team fights to, to turn them around. T1 are too strong right now and are more than happily to fight through some of these defensive maneuvers that, that has to camp off as a team. <laughs> this is something that the teams have been doing lately. Have three fours that scale well and that's very tanky. Gets bursted down. They can get more. They're trying to head forward, but again, Zephyr, very hard target to grab. 23 Savage as well with the age is just not something that Asta can afford to, to jump on. So, and then they get, they get White Mom, but getting anything else just still proving to be so difficult for Asta. It's just a support kill. A uh, good thing is Medusa is farming. She's not keeping up with the life stealer. But once that Aghanim Scepter is done, which is a thousand gold away, team fights are going to become uh, much easier for them. They will have uh, one, two, even three resetting tools with the Gaze, Snake, Overgrowth. Even Mars Arena can be used defensively. T1 ready to swing rounds the bottom lane. Take another easy tier one tower here as Asta. Trying to get out along this mid lane. Again, very hard for them to, to initiate, at least initiate without any counters coming into play. Zephyr is constantly trying to keep himself in the area of Asta's movement, so he is ready with the Photic Shield saves. Asta make the move. White Mon as well, also just aggressively positioning himself, knowing that 
Yeah, that is one of the pluses of having these two supports, just two supports that just never really feel that good to go on because you're not always going to be guaranteed to get the kill. Carl, the taunting down bottom here with the RP. T1 is setting up for a fight. And they're going to find the only key. Carl, Carl the nice they're going to jump in onto Mono. The arena's going to come off. See, Carl still holding the RP for now. The stone gates will come to an end. I mean, that's the two arms from Aster use. Nothing to be got done. Got now to run for it. We'll be able to hold man off with the stun in the head. They're locking down Carl. Carl has to put the BKB. He'll skewer out to reset himself. You've got to watch him. He's going to be ready soon for a blink RP if he finds the opportunity. There's the jump. Lord down there. Catches the two cores. Do they have the damage? Why not get taken down low by this harassment from Cuckoo? And now over to Monet. The turn towards the next target. Monet, he's going to go for the TP in front of the ball, but the skewer's nice back skewer. up. The TP is cancelled as T1. They'll take the fight. Lanham's trying to hide in the trees. He will manage to make it away. But they get the two big kills there, T1. The Both the Deusa and the DP taken out. And just so, so Lightstealer, lovely movements here. Yeah, Lightstealer instantly connects on the Deusa, starts right clicking her uh, extra slow, kicking in from that uh, Ghoul Frenzy, and the uh, uh, fresh to bot Scotty. She's out of mana, uh, pops the magic stick, and then she has enough mana for a stick. We see Carl uh, using Skewer defensively, and then resets. So two man RP, nice and fast, something that I talked about that the 23 Savage is really good at using. Uh, doesn't necessarily save Scar, but uh, you know, just heals him up. And now they're in. They, they want to take this uh, tier three barracks, tier three tower, and the barracks. Yeah. Huge push coming in to get this very early objective. Yet again, you know, just 22 minutes in, and T1 taking the melee barracks from the bottom lane. And yeah, it's just the way as well that Carl. You know, the patience from him to, to hold the RP, make sure that even though he was showing himself getting involved, you know, he wasn't just sitting at the side waiting for the opportune RP moment. He was playing right in the, the, the center of the fight, but knowing that he had that ability with the BKB skewer to, to yeah, hold back and come back in when Asta, you know, is already a point in the fight where Asta pretty much used all their ultimates and didn't have anything to respond to it. Now straight away, T1 uh, had to staying on Asta's half of the map. You want can afford to get uh, like a mistake or two in a team fight. They have the uh, aphotic shield, they have a mech, hold the locket, 23 stacks, gonna munch on lion. Yeah, and open to the side, Carl. He's in with the BKB, he's got the skewer back on White Hammer. And then a huge catch here from the Magnus. As he sets up 23 Savage to clean up the kills, double kill on the life stealer. They're pushing it down mid and <laughs> I mean, honestly, this game too, it, we, we're just seeing the same here from C1. Just top stuff. There is no doubt about it that the work and preparation that this is put in supports the other huge. The arena will come down. Mone, get the stone gates up, but there's they, no damage. T1 don't care at all about being caught in this combo. It's Aster that have to run as soon as the ultimates are used. They just cannot fight T1. T1, they're, they're all full HP. They're pushing down the middle. There's the There's RP on again. Carl gets the RP, and he's caught the big one. He's caught Mone. Mone out of mana. He'll go down. As the I mean, they yeah. absolutely go in the way. There it is. Call the GG. I was about to say it. They might call the GG something that uh, yeah. IG really set up a new standard for it in the Chinese region. Just calling out the GG early on, but uh, D1, they came into this series prepared. First game, they last pick uh, Broodmother, they stomped him. The master in both of these.